Hallelujah. Wow. Um, I would love more feedbacks on this journey as um, I share on this series, Live in the Spirit. I would love more feedback. I said a lot of things last week which I still would like to build on. And um, I thank God because he has ushered us into a new season. So even if you are connected online, don't be surprised if you start experiencing the supernatural in your home where you are, or probably you're driving. Don't be surprised at all. If you want the gifts of the Holy Spirit and um, before now, you've not been able to operate the gifts or you don't have the assurance of those gifts stay connected and just talk to God all right and just tell God I receive it I want it and um, as an assurance that um, what is happening here is not man-made as an assurance that is consistent with his word God will prove it in your life Okay, God will prove it in your life. Someone told me I was sharing and um, he had me speaking in tongues and said, oh, that he also desires he should speak in tongues and he started speaking in tongues. I told him I'm not surprised. Amen? I'm not surprised. And if you are sick in your body, I want you to just um, agree with me that the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead will quicken your body. Amen. Amen. You see yourself being able to do the things that you have not been able to do for a long time as a result of whatever sickness that yoke is going to break. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And so, um, you're welcome to World Feast. We have been on this series on Live in the Spirit trying to is a is is more than just a wake up call all right it's a wake up call to call believers back into alignment to the kind of walk that God wants us to have but apart from being just a wake up call it's also a season of empowerment i want you to take note of that so that you don't just bother yourself only with listening but also you will desire okay to have the manifestation of all those spiritual encounters as you hear them and then um, walk in those spiritual gifts that you have either told taught was not for you or your type you know someone said oh, you know it's those in ministry that needs those gifts i want to say this to you child of god the believer's life is ministry whether you are in the marketplace, whether you are a teacher, whatever you, vocation you have, it's an, it should be an expression of God. All right? You are in entertainment, you are a model, you are a lawyer, you are a judge, you are a nurse. You know, whatever vocation you are in. Okay? God didn't give us his spirit so that we can just speak in tongues and perform miracles like we define miracles god gave us his spirit so that we can live a god life god gave us his spirit so that you can whatever you are doing is with the influence of god that's why god gave you his spirit you see so you don't want to put the Holy Spirit, confine the Holy Spirit to just when oh, we come together to pray. Or confine the Holy Spirit to just when, you know, it's time to read the scripture now. I know I want understanding of the scriptures. No. The Holy Spirit will teach you beyond just the scriptures. He will teach you how to engage life. Like I said in one of the series, you see, the Holy Spirit is older than the devil. Are you getting it? The Holy Spirit knows every of the devil's tricks. The devil can only play big to people who have not been redeemed. 
to you as a believer, the devil is small. He can't bully you. Why? Because the help of the Holy Spirit is there to help you to exercise the victory that Christ has given consistently all through your living. So, you are a driver, a bus driver. Yes, the Holy Spirit is there with you in the bus. Your husband, the Holy Spirit is there. Your wife, the Holy Spirit is there. Whatever you are, the Holy Spirit is there. He knows all things. You see, a lot of people think the Holy Spirit is only a partner when we are in church or when we are praying. And that's why many believers don't produce God's results in other aspects of their lives. The Holy Spirit is not just there for you to sing and pray to God and read the Bible and understand. No, the Holy Spirit is there to be with you forever. So I want you to picture this, okay, with your mind eyes. Someone that is stuck with me forever. Stuck with me. You will agree with me that it goes everywhere I go. Yeah. I'm going to the washroom. I drag him along or he drags me along. <laughs> Are you getting it? I want you to imagine that. That's the fusion that God did with you and the Holy Spirit. And we're going to see it in the scriptures quickly. That's what the... the that's oh God, I love you, Lord. Whew, thank you, Lord. I'm feeling the anointing of the Holy Spirit already. And it's almost making me laugh. Ooh, kalaba, shatari, kalaba. You see, that, that fusion is what he did. And you need to understand this, child of God. If you don't understand this, you won't enjoy the best of the Holy Spirit. He won't force himself on you. He won't force himself on your business. He won't force himself on your, uh, on your health. He won't force himself on your circumstance. No, he won't. He requires your submission. Your willing submission. Right? Your your surrenderedness. And we're going to see the scriptures. Hmm. Thank you, Lord. The Bible calls him the spirit of truth. Whom the world cannot receive. I love you, Holy Spirit. 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 We're going to read John chapter 14. And the scripture says in verse 17. I read the English Standard Version. Wow, thank you, Lord. Let's read from verse 16. And I will ask the Father, and I will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. He dwells with you and will be in you. I want you to get that. This is the person I call the spirit of compliance. That's my own phrase. All right? That is the Holy Spirit to a, is in you and with you to ensure that you are compliant to living the God life. I want you to get it. So the Holy Spirit is not just there because you, you want to pray. And so you, you're saying, oh, the Bible says in Romans chapter 8, it helps me to pray with groanings and blah, 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 blah. It's not just to pray. All day, where has he been? You have shut him out. I want you to imagine a friend that only calls you when he needs something. You know at some point you'll be put off. You won't even want to pick his calls. True or false? True. 
And the reason why believers are underperforming in terms of the faith that we proclaim is because of the place we have put the Holy Spirit. He is supposed to be the one to teach us. He's supposed to be the one to guide us. He's supposed to be the one to help us. He's supposed to be the one. There's nothing we could have done or can do without him. Now we want to do those things without him. It's not possible. And look, Jesus told the church, the disciples don't go anywhere wait for the promise of the father he commanded them in acts chapter one he commanded them said don't depart from jerusalem until you have been endued with power from an eye because jesus is trying to pick to to paint a picture to us that listen every promise i have made will only happen if you receive him the Holy Spirit. If you reject him, there will be no performance. Let's open to Acts chapter 1. So, why will miracles happen? Even as you hear me teach and preach, miracles will happen because I have understood the Holy Spirit as the one that helps us to perform. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, there is no kingdom life. Without the Holy Spirit, there is no fruits of the Spirit. And that's the truth. Listen, without the Holy Spirit, there is no true prosperity that is kingdom given. I'm not talking about the one you struggle like an unbeliever and compete with them in their game. And they can't know that you are, you are powered by God. I'm talking about the kind of empowerment that the unbeliever will be scared of you because you are operating by a higher wisdom that the wisdom of this world will bow to. I want you to look at the life of people like Daniel. Look at the life of people like Joseph. What stood them out? The God influence in them. The God empowerment in, in them. And that is how God wants us to live now. All those things happen to us for our examples. So that on your job, you are not just there working 9 to 5 like every other person. Or maybe you work evening shift or night shift. Whatever shift you are working, you are working it with the Holy Ghost. You are working it in the Holy Ghost. Empowered by the Holy Ghost. So you will be delivering, you will be outperforming your peers. Yes, that's your advantage. That's your advantage. That's your advantage. If you have the Spirit of God, that's your advantage. The home believers should be intimidated by your performance that they will either envy you or come to ask you that, hey, how are you doing this? I remember once when a colleague said, you know, you know all these people that use voodoo, I laughed. I had to tell him that I don't use voodoo. <laughs> I said I use the Holy Ghost power. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Even as a student, you have that advantage. Imagine if God does business, will he fail? Imagine if God does if God is gonna sit for an exam, will he fail? Now, I'm not condemning you for failing, all right, if you're a believer. But if you are consistent, <laughs> if you are consistent in failing, or you are performing the unbelievers in failure, <laughs> there's a problem. Okay? There is a problem. I know I'm laughing, but I'm not mocking you. Why I'm standing here is that God wants to call you back and reset you. This is spiritual reset that is happening in this series. Spiritual reset. There are some nonsense teachings that we've had that has polluted our minds, that has deformed us in nature. That God, by the help of His Word, the Holy Spirit will take the hammer of the Word 
according to Jeremiah, he said your word is like hammer. It will break those cocoon that the devil has built around us and cast us, caged us, such that we know that God can perform, but we are not seeing him his performance we are not seeing power we know god can heal we are not seeing healing the pastor once told me he said oh you know all those things about god healing is in the past i said no do you have any sick person in your church he said how do you mean i said please call the person to come now i'm going to pray for him now so that you know that that healing power is not a thing of the past he didn't do it but i meant it and God will honor his name to heal the person. I once, once in a meeting, I can never forget, the guy opened up to me, said, you know, when they talk all these things about the Holy Spirit, the anointing and everything, I don't believe it. He said, but after you ministered, he said, something happened to me that has never happened before. What happened? That was the guy I said could not come to collect the mic the anointing of God came over him where he was. He could not deny it. Listen, when the Spirit of God comes on you, you can't deny it. It's not emotions. It's beyond that. It's reality. I told you my experience. I came under the power of God slain in the Spirit. I was just on the ground, buried under His glory. I tried to struggle to stand up. It was my friend I was ministering. Can you imagine? I was, I'm taller than the guy. <laughs> He didn't even touch me. <laughs> the anointing of the Holy Spirit just came over me. And I was buried under his glory. And I didn't rise up the same. I rose up a changed man. You know, I don't like people just falling anyhow. If you fall and you won't change, <laughs> I don't want you to. I don't want, you know, but I rose up a changed man. Something happened in me that changed. I understood what the scripture said after that Saul was anointed he received a new spirit after David was anointed he received a new spirit and there are results look at David's result he showed it showed why is yours different and I don't want us to be religious okay I want us to be real And ask yourself, is my life consistent with what he says? What God's word says? What God says? Or those things are still far from where I am. Some people have even backslidden. I met someone like that once because God could not solve his problem. He decided to go and seek help in the world. Thank God he was restored. But I want you to imagine if you didn't hear a message like this. So, we're privileged again to hear these things. And may God help you not to just be hearers, but to be doers. I desire that you come into this experience. Moses said, I wish that all of you are prophets anybody that has encountered the sweetness of God's presence, we desire that everybody should taste this. Who said it in the scripture? He said, taste and see for the Lord is good. Was it the psalmist? Because it, you can't describe the sweetness. Words are limited to describe it. The presence of the Holy Spirit will make a mess of your intelligence. Because you see him doing things out of nothing. Yes. Nothing. You just see him doing things to, oh my God. Let's look at it. What did, thank you Lord. From verse 4 of Acts chapter 1. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, that's a command in them, not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And he said, you have heard of me, John, baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now I'm going somewhere with this. 
why I cited the scripture, I will tell you. Flip to Acts chapter 2. Now, I want you to understand this, that before Acts chapter 2, the apostles did exactly what Jesus said they should do. All right? They did exactly what he said they should do. They did not leave Jerusalem. All right? They stayed. As he commanded them to wait, they waited. I'm going to show you that example. Um, oh, that's um, site, um, Acts chapter 1 from verse 13. Th 13, yeah. The scripture says, And when they had entered, they went up to the upper room. That's where they were staying, where they lodged. Peter, James, Peter, John, and James, and Andrew, Philips, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, Judas, the son of James. All this with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. And that refers to even his earthly brothers in the flesh. In verse, okay, verse 15. In those days, Peter stood up among the brothers. The company of the persons were in all about 120 and said, Brothers, the scriptures had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke beforehand by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who became a guide to those who arrested Jesus of Nazareth, for he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in the ministry. Now this man acquired a field, and he went on and narrated the story of how Judas died, and they had to replace him. Okay, they had to make a choice between Matthias and another guy, Justus, the son of Justus. Now, I want you to take note of what they did here in the scripture. The Bible says they continued in the upper room. They waited. And I'll tell you what occurred to me as I read that scripture was the value you place on the Holy Spirit will determine your value of waiting on him. The value you place on the Holy Spirit will determine what extent you will go to make sure that you come into that experience of what of manifesting the presence of the Holy Spirit. This is Rabbi Asamli, the Wealthy Place. Because since last week I've been talking about practicing the presence of the Holy Spirit. And um, some people embarked on the exercises I said. Um, let me recap a bit on that. I said to practice His presence, there are some things I do which has really helped me. And um, I'm very positive that they will also help you. What I do is that I spend time alone with Him. All right? And I do a lot of praying in the Spirit. I add fasting to it. All right? And the fasting really is not to bribe God. It's to humble my flesh. And then I do another thing. I pick a scripture verse. And I say it often to myself. Also, I meditate in the word of God. Okay? I occupy my mind with this word. Also, I practice the presence. I practice repentance from dead works. I just, I, I examine myself. The Bible says you should judge yourself so that you will not be judged. I examine myself consistently. I practice forgiveness. I practice obedience consistently. I do a lot of that in trying to practice the consciousness of the Holy Spirit. Back to that text that I was 
dwelling on in Acts chapter 1. The apostles and the disciples did exactly what Jesus ordered them to do. They waited. Waiting is not you fold their hands, no. You could see that they were engaging in spiritual exercises. Engaging spiritual exercises. Now, permit me to say this to you, child of God. If you cannot sacrifice time for the Holy Spirit to practice fellowship with the Holy Spirit, to practice communion with the Holy Spirit, to get acquainted with this new person that you have met spiritually, to know him. He cannot empower you. Yes. He cannot trust you with spiritual gifts. He can't. If you are the kind of Christian that only enjoys prayer because you want to get something from God, and when you get the miracle, you go again like a prodigal son and then resurface again. It, God will forgive you definitely. But you see, you will limit your expression of the God life. And so this is a golden secret which I'm going to explore again by the help of the Holy Spirit in the course of this teaching. If you can't value this new relationship that you have with the Holy Spirit enough to devote time to know Him. Child of God, you can't manifest your real fullness in God. Because listen, there's no way you can be the real you without the Holy Spirit. Jesus said He will teach you it will bring things to your remembrance, everything that I've taught you. He will comfort you. He does it. So if you remove him from the equation of your walk with God, it will amount to zero, nothing. Someone said this, and I agree. He said, Christianity without the anointing, all right, is annoyance. And I totally agree. Because you just be a loud talker and no performer. And you see, the truth is that now the world is waiting for the manifestations of the sun. The world is tired of explanation. The world is tired of all this teaching, quote Greek version, quote Hebrew version, quote all the kinds of version. How many versions did Paul know? You know, Paul didn't know Genesis to Revelation. He didn't have the volume of the books you have. Yeah, he didn't have it. Paul didn't have the volume of this Bible, Genesis to Revelation. He didn't have it. He didn't have that compilation. Many of the early churches, I'll give you the secret, interesting, had just some of these epistles in parchments like letters written to them they're just in maybe five pages not full bible like you have so i can imagine on the day of judgment the cloud of witness standing and you also standing and some of them will be like wow come on you you messed up <laughs> you know timothy will be like hey if I had Genesis to Revelation, I would shake the world. And some people will die of sickness and go to heaven. Some of them will be like, hey, is that portion by stripes you were healed missing from your Bible? <laughs> is it missing from your Bible? You know, there will be so many questions. Because you have no excuse. Come on. God expects that as the church grows older on earth, more glory should be revealed. 
Why are we short of glory? Why? Because we kicked the person in charge out. The Holy Spirit is the custodian of the glory of God. The custodian of the power of God. The custodian of the grace of God. is the one that ensures we can live the divine life. Such that when you start laying your hands on the work that you normally do before now, from end for they begin to prosper. The Holy Spirit will start giving you inspiration, concepts, ideas, innovations on how to engage in a way that will wow the unbelievers. So that even on your job, you are a producer of signs and wonders. Are you getting it? Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. The demons in your job, he said you will cast them out. <laughs> are you getting it? You will cast them out. So, you see, the early church paid that price before they could manifest. My question to you is this. Are you willing to pay this price so that you can manifest? When I see people who get angry when they tell them to pray, I'm laughing. I remember what the pastor once said to me. He said, why are we praying so fervently like this? He has done everything. We should just claim it. <laughs> we should just claim it. And I laughed at his ignorance. He interrupted the prayer meeting. It wasn't my meeting, but I had to take it over. And I challenged him straight away. I said, hey, you keep quiet. If you don't understand spiritual matters, you learn. He didn't know I was a pastor, but they were shocked. Only one of them knew I was a pastor or a minister. He said, if you don't understand how to engage spiritual matters, you keep quiet. It was at a cinema in park. And you learn. And listen, if you don't want to pray while they are saying we should pray for souls to be saved and blah, 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 you can leave. Alright? Let those who don't want to pray follow you. <laughs> those of us who want to pray can continue. <laughs> Now, we continued praying and the anointing just went to another level. So, when people don't understand what it takes to take delivery of the supernatural, they trivialize the way they engage the Holy Spirit. If you understand that everything that will make you be the testimony God wants you to be is dependent on your relationship with the Holy Spirit, do you know what? You will take him very serious. You will not want to go any day without him. You will not want to do anything without him. And listen, I said him because he is a person. It's not a thing. He has things, he has power, he has wisdom, he has different things, but he is a person. And only those who understand him as a person can see the power of God released in their life. Because if you understand him as a person, you will relate with him the way Paul did. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Paul said, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 2 Corinthians 13, 14. And the love of God. And the communion, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And you could see the results in Paul's life. The outcome is, is what I desire. Why? Because he understood the Holy Spirit and how to engage him. One, we have discovered in this series that if you are born again, you are born of the Spirit. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. You are a Spirit. Because what? God is a Spirit. John 4.24 Alright? Like a man cannot give birth to a cat or a dog. God give birth to spirit children. <laughs> now that you know you are a Spirit, you have been given someone who is spirit the administrator of the gifts of God of the power of God 
the explainer, expositor of the word of God. You have been given that person who knows everything God knows. Because the scripture says in Corinthians that who, know, who knows a man better than the spirit of a man? He said, same thing. Nobody knows God like the spirit of God. So he knows God very well. He, know, he knows what God wants for you. He knows how to make you like Jesus because Jesus Christ said he would testify of me, he would speak of me, he will make you to know things about me and know me so that you can manifest me. Now, you are a spirit given that spirit and God said he didn't give that spirit to, to Jesus in measure. Given the same spirit, that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, everything Jesus became when he was on earth, that was the person responsible. That was Jesus' mentor when he was on earth. That was the person that empowered him when he was on earth. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Luke, um, Acts 10.38, with the Holy Ghost and with power. Alright? Now, we have been anointed with the same Holy Ghost. You see, this will help you not to rate him small and treat him as if he's not important. The same spirit that made Jesus to so conform to the will of God in the flesh such that he pleased God, that is the spirit you have been given. That is the spirit I have been given so that we don't walk alone. Read John chapter 15, John chapter 14. And you discover some things about him. When you give that spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Lord, attention, then your life will start speaking for God. Let's open to Ezekiel chapter 39, verse 29. Ezekiel 39, 29. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My life will speak for God. I want you to say to yourself, my life will speak for God. And I will not hide my face anymore from them. When I pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, declares the Lord God. Jesus, help me. Help me. I want to communicate this for you to understand. Look at the grand plan of God. You remember in Joel, he confirmed it again. He said in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And um, Peter quoted from that scripture in Acts chapter 2. I want us to look at it. Acts chapter 2, verse 17. In the last days, it shall be God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on your male servants, my female servants in those days. On my male servant my fem and female servant in those days. I will pour out my spirit. And they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor, and, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can you see that? Listen. We have entered a season where we are going to be seeing mass salvation of souls because of this understanding, the Holy Spirit. So that when you are speaking, you are not just speaking your words, you are speaking from Him. He inspires your thoughts, he inspires your words. So God made a promise, I will pour out my Spirit. 
I will pour out my spirit. I want you to imagine all those things God said will happen. Prophecy, visions, dreams. All right? Signs and wonders. That means without the spirit, they can't happen. Hey, listen. Your prosperity, the type of prosperity that God has ordained for you as a New Testament believer cannot happen without the Holy Spirit. If you just want to struggle like unbelievers and compete at their level, no problem. Keep kicking them out. But if you want extraordinary influence of God to be seen evidently in your life, embrace the Holy Spirit. Child of God, if you do, your results will be different. It's a promise. Thank you, Lord. Your results will be different. I want us to open to Isaiah chapter 32. And I'm going to read a scripture to us. I encountered this scripture years back. Years back. And it just changed my life. Isaiah 32 verse 15. Help us, Lord. Isaiah 32, 15. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and the fruitful field is deemed a forest, then justice will dwell in the wilderness, and righteousness abide in the fruitful field, and the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. My people will abide in peaceful habitation, in secure dwellings, and in quiet resting place. Child of God, when the Holy Spirit opened my eyes to see this, that He is the game changer, when He comes on the scene, He changes the game. He changes the game. And we are permitting that game changer, the Holy Spirit, into our affairs going forward. Let the devil knows that, know it, that we are coming. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. The result that will come out of your life will no more be that of frustration, will no more be that of sickness, will no more be that of shame, we no more be that of a person that has not experienced redemption, but will be that which is consistent with redemption. We'll be receiving instant testimonies and instant miracles. A couple were really at loggerheads some days ago, and um, the husband called me. And to the glory of God, I stepped into their house. I didn't really say much. I left. All I told God was, I leave your peace here. And the guy was like, what happened? My wife has changed. Yes, she will change. Because what I did was that I brought the Holy Spirit on the scene. I'm afraid when we stop here, because of time. I can't say enough to take you into this experience. So I'm not trusting in what I can say. But the Lord will prove it to you that his testimony is true. Because it's your right, it's your inheritance to walk in it. Amen. For if your spirit is not submissive to the Holy Spirit, you'll be very vulnerable and naked. The time has come for you not to walk naked anymore, but to walk covered with His glory. That is our covering, the glory of God. That is our covering, 
That is our defense. He said in his word, he said, Upon all my glory shall be a defense. That is the one that goes ahead of us in the battle of life and makes the crooked path straight, fills the valley up so that it makes us to walk on leveled ground. Is the one that anoints us for ease, for ease, for ease, so that by him we can boast that we can climb the mountains, we can break through the troops, we can leap over the walls by him, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We trust that this broadcast has been a blessing to you today. We invite you to stay in touch with us and be current with what is happening in Revaya Ministries. Please visit our website, www.reviaministries.org, and to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Revaya Assembly. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Wealthy Place TV, to get more spiritual edification. Thank you for tuning in today. God bless you.